Hey guys, and welcome back to another lesson. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at how to restring a uh, wraparound bridge guitar. So I have a PRS SE 245. Now the things you'll need, go through uh, by most important to least important, you're gonna need a set of strings, because we have to put these on the guitar in order to change the strings, obviously. And when I got the guitar, it actually came and had some dirt on the strings, so the strings must be pretty old. So we're gonna put a pair, uh, or a pack of new strings on. These are Diodario 10 to 46s. I typically recommend 9 to 42 uh, for beginners, uh, but on this guitar, this is what we'll use. Definitely need a pack of strings. Some sort of tuner. I'm gonna use a clip-on headstock tuner in order to make sure everything's set right but you can always use a app like Guitar Tuna. A string winder and string cutter. Now, this isn't 100% necessary. The string winder just helps us tighten the strings and loosen the strings a little bit quicker. The cutters will help us cut the strings. Now, the winder isn't necessary, but the cutter is. If you don't wanna get this tool specifically, then you can always do with just regular wire cutters. Uh, if you're a kid, make sure that you have adult supervision when doing this. Uh, just because it is a sharp tool and you don't want to get hurt. And the second to last, actually, I have one other thing that's off camera, but we are going to be using finger ease to lubricate the strings after we put them on to make sure that they are feeling smooth and staying fresh. You can do this before and after you play uh, your guitar. And the thing that's off camera is a uh, cleaning cloth. I'm going to be using an old t-shirt. So you can just follow along and see how I use that. Okay, so one thing that you might notice on wraparound bridges is there are these studs. That's what the bridge is kind of hooked onto. And we have to make sure that when we're loosening the strings that the, the bridge doesn't come off. We don't want it to come off. We want it to stay put. So I recommend doing or taking off three strings at a time and then putting the three new ones on and then doing the next three separate. That way the bridge does stay put. So I'm gonna start off by loosening my E, A, and D string with my string winder. Now on a three on one side and three on the other side headstock, remember that turning the tuning keys is the opposite for each one. So for example, on the top side, if we go clockwise, it's loosening. But if we were to do counterclockwise over here, that would be how to loosen over here. Okay, and that's all based on how I'm visualizing the guitar right now. So clockwise to loosen here. So I'm gonna loosen all the strings until they start rattling. And that is what I'm gonna do with these three strings. I'm actually gonna lift the head up just a little bit. If you don't have a neck brace like this, you can always use paper towels or, uh, well, a roll of paper towels to be more specific, or um, even a roll of toilet paper can help just to make sure the head is off the table so you're not putting pressure on the actual head and might accidentally break it. So I definitely recommend either having this or those uh, props for you. All right, so the three strings are now rattling. I'm going to take my cutters and I'm gonna cut each string, but before I do that, I wanna hold the strings at the 12th fret. That way when I cut it, they don't end up flying up. Now they are loose, which means if they fly up, they probably won't do any damage, but it's still safe to just hold down the strings. That way you don't have to risk it. So I'll cut each string towards uh, the middle in between both pickups. You can cut it you know, over either pickup, it really doesn't actually matter. This is just my preferred spot to cut the strings. And there we go. Now I'm gonna take this part of the string and up at the headstock, it is wrapped around the tuning peg. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go the opposite direction as, the as it wraps and get it off that tuning peg. And then once I get them off, I usually just kind of pull them all together, make sure you don't get poked by the sharp ends and then I wrap them in a loop like this and that just makes it easier for me to dispose of them and not lose them. So I'll put those to the side and I come over the bridge and I have these ends sticking out so I just want to flatten out the string as much as possible and slide out the remainder. All right, so now that I've done that, I can go ahead and open my new strings. And I need Again, three of the strings out of this package. Some strings are packaged individually, so you can just set those three aside, but I know I'm gonna need my gold and my red, and I believe my green, but I don't remember without checking, so I will check that in a second. But essentially, I'm, I know the colors based on 
this little chart on the back of my strings. Your strings, if they're individually packaged, will usually tell you which string they are. If they're not individually packaged, you might get a, a chart like this that tells you like the color of the balls of the string. Um, specifically on the brand I use, Diodario, that's what they do and that's helpful, so I like it. Now I'm going to unwrap these strings and they come wrapped in twos. So I'm gonna unwrap these. I know that gold is my low E, so I'm gonna use that and set it to the side. Now what I need to do is exactly the opposite of what I did when I pulled the last bit of string out of here. I need to feed this string in and then once I get it through enough, I will pull it all the way through the bridge and then I will pull up. Now you're gonna have a little bit of slack here. I would recommend just pinching it so that it wraps around the bridge like it's supposed to and you get a nice firm and crisp bend right at the exit of the back of the bridge. Now I'm going to line up the hole on my tuning peg with the slot on my nut for the proper string. So now the hole is pretty close to lined up with the low E slot. I'm going to go ahead and feed my string through that. And then I need to give the string a little bit of slack so that it's not too tight around the tuning peg. So I'm going to pull my string up at the fifth fret for the low E. I pinch it at the nut again. I'm gonna bend the string up at the tuning peg and then it should fit snugly. Now I need to turn counterclockwise to tighten the string. Now if you don't remember counterclockwise or clockwise, just remember that on a three on three headstock, your string should all be facing the inside of the head. On a three on one side, if they're on the top, they should be facing the bottom side. And if it's three on the bottom, they should be facing the top side. Okay, so every guitar is a little different, but most of the time on a wraparound bridge style of guitar, this is what you will see at three on three. So we will go ahead and tighten this up. And I'm not looking to get it in tune, I just want it tight and snug and I want to watch both ends so in the nut it's sitting pretty close to where it should be or it's in the nut actually so I'm going to just leave that alone and then I'm watching the back end towards the bridge I want to make sure that it's falling in the grooves that are cut for the string on the saddle piece and the actual wrapped around part of the bridge okay once the string starts making noise we can probably stop you can always tune it up at this point but I typically wait until the end to do that then we want to bend the string up again because it's probably gone a little flat after all that winding. And I'm going to cut off all but about an inch or two. So what we're going to do, uh, the reason we leave that little bit on the string is because we're actually going to stretch the strings to help it stay in tune. That was how we did the low E string. I'll go ahead and just speed through real quick on the A and D string or skip through it, whatever is easiest but you'll kind of just see me run through those and then we'll pick back up when we do the G, B, and high E. All right, so you saw me put the string through. I just wanted to also let you know that as I go, I change the amount of slack I give because the distance of the pegs from the nut is a little bit further. So when I get to, uh, let, me, let me just put it this way. Both E's, I do a fifth fret of slack, so that same method I showed you like this. When I get to my A and my B string, I do the third fret, which is just a little bit more slack, not a whole lot. And then when I get to my D and my G string, I give those a first fret of slack, which again is just a little bit more than that third fret. And this is just to compensate for the difference between each peg. So again, I'll just go ahead and speed through the uh, last two strings, A and D, on this side of the guitar. Okay, so now that I've gotten the whole process done of getting my E, A, and D string put on the guitar, I can go ahead and start focusing on my G, B, and high E. So it's pretty much the same process. I just have to loosen these, which I said, uh, as I said, we will actually go counterclockwise to loosen these strings, unlike the last ones, which were clockwise to loosen. And I just want them to rattle.
And then after we do that, it's all the same process. I cut these three after holding down the 12th fret. I unwrap them from the pegs, slide them out, and then put the new ones on one at a time. So because it's all the same process, I will go ahead and speed through that for you as well. And if there's anything that I think of that you might wanna know or need to know about doing this, I will stop in the middle of the demonstration. Okay, so now that I've gotten all my strings on the guitar, I can go ahead and tune up the guitar using my tuner. Now, I'm not gonna really explain how to tune a guitar in this video because I do have an entire lesson dedicated to how to tune the guitar. But go ahead, tune your guitar, and then I'll show you how I go about stretching the strings. Okay, so I'm gonna explain the process of stretching the strings and then I'll speed up what I'm actually doing. So the process of stretching the strings for me is I just go around the you know bottom of the neck or actually the top of the neck because these are the higher frets and I'm just gonna pull up on the string lightly. So I'm giving it a tug and I don't wanna give it so much of a tug that it breaks so be very uh, gentle especially once you get up to the higher strings. The lower strings probably aren't gonna break but you also don't wanna try and break them. So I'm gonna give every string a little tug you might hear some movement of the string unlocking from the nut or the bridge, and that is fine. We want it to unlock itself from any pressure points that are keeping it still. Because in order to make sure it stays in tune well, we want it to slide back and forth easily between the nut and the saddle. And this ensures that we'll stay in tune. So I've gone ahead and uh, stretched those strings. So now I'm gonna retune the guitar, and then I just keep repeating that process until stretching the strings like that does barely anything. So I'll go ahead and speed through the process for you. Okay, so I've stretched the strings sufficiently enough, at least for my taste. You can obviously keep going through and doing that. Now once I've finished all of that, I will take my finger ease and I just give it a couple of sprays along the strings over the fretboard and then any residue that might get on the guitar, I wipe down and then I go over the strings a couple of times with my cloth. The last thing I will recommend that you do though is cut the ends of the strings sticking off that we left there while we stretch the strings as close to the pegs as possible. That way you don't get poked while you're using your guitar. Thank you so much for watching this lesson, guys. I hope you found it useful. Any of the products I will recommend are going to be in the description. And I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'll see you next time.